that love vibe. Devright Homes, when you're looking for attention to detail and a uniquely designed home to suit all your needs. At Devright Homes, we only build a limited number of homes per year, so we can truly focus on what you want out of a prestige home builder. We've continually won awards for excellence, with a record number of wins last year and the proud winner of the Australian Townhouse Villa of the Year. While we love building homes to suit each client, we pride ourselves on designing homes that take into account the special safety needs of some of our clients. If you have a dream, we can make it come true. Talk to Jay Mangano and find out more about Devright Homes at www.devright.com.au. This is The Sattler Files. Welcome back to The Sattler Files. I'm Murray Korf and with me uh, to talk a little bit about uh, houses and building and so on is Jay Mangano from Devright Homes of Distinction. Hi Murray, how are you today? Good, thank you. Um, Jay, we talk a lot about houses and one thing and another and you... Devright Homes design beautiful homes. How do you get on with copyright? Uh, copyright's an interesting subject. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have been involved in one of those Is that right? lawsuits. Yeah. yeah. Um, and people are of the assumption that you can tra- change 10% of the plan and it's not copyright. No. That's not true. No, it's not. It could be just one unique feature that you copy and you could be in breach of copyright. Mm. So it is... Um, it is, and it could cost you a lot of money, couldn't oh, it? Oh, heaps! Mm. It could cost you heaps of money. Um, it's, so let's lay out a scenario here. Someone comes to you and wants to build a home, and they've got a layout that they like, and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, how do you go about making sure that you that you're not copying someone else's work? There is no way because there's no register you can look up or anything like that. No. There is no way. You can um, – if someone comes to me and they've cut the title box, box off a plan uh. or it looks like it's been doctored, the, my first question is who drew this? Yes. And, oh, well, if I'd rather not say, I'll go, well – you know, if it belongs to someone else, I can't build it. So, mm. you know, it's a waste of time even looking at it, mm. pricing it, giving you anything. Because a lot of people want to shop around mm. and just work out that they're getting a good deal. Mm. But you don't do that at other, someone else's expense. It costs money to price plans. So, of course it does. Yeah. Um, you know, and just to go into a builder and think, oh, I'm just going to get them to price this plan and mm. find out if I'm being ripped off or not is just... Oh, that's not odd. It's but, not not but, cricket. No, do, do people do that? Do they? they do. Yeah, they think it's okay. They but, don't think that they're doing anything wrong. But it's really it. It a pricing on a particular uh, plan takes uh, into account all sorts of things that may not be on another one. I yeah, mean, it makes no sense to even do that. Well, you, unless you've got a written addenda that says exactly what's in and exactly what's out yeah you've got no hope and even when you've got that written piece of a pa- you, you there's no guarantee so no, no. um yeah it's it's the mind boggles is what people think is acceptable behavior but <laughs> that's um, really strange isn't it and i suppose that the danger is that people would go around to you know these display homes and get ideas and all of that sort of everyone stuff. goes around and gets ideas yeah. um But, I mean, you look at colours and you look at things, but to go in there and copy someone's plan is just, Mm. it's just, it's fraught with danger. Mm. It could be costly if you get caught out. Mm. Um, And I'm sure people do it all the time and never get caught because Mm. how would anyone know? Mm. Um, But if you do get caught, it's costly. So I would imagine so. And, of course, it would do your reputation no good to get caught, would it? Yeah. it's it seems a silly thing for people to do. It is it, it is easy to get caught. I've been caught just recently when we built a plan for somebody and they come in and they said, "Can we just change this to this and this to this?" And it's drawn on our plan and they've whited it out and put in what they want. And you mm. think, "Okay, then, you know, that's that looks like it'll work." Mm. And um, then something comes up and then they go, "Oh yeah, that's from the." Uh, the project home that we went and had a look at the other day, and you go, okay, oh, that would that, that would just make you feel sick, wouldn't it? That oh, you, it, that would especially be. when I've spent money drawing it, and then yeah. they go, oh, I've copied it from someone else, and you go, 
well... You're not allowed to do that. No, you can't do perhaps, that. Perhaps you should get them to sign something that <laughs> says, and this is, this is all my own work, yeah. you know, because... And, I mean, look, it's it's only fair, really, isn't it? I mean, you wouldn't like to have one of your designs copied by anybody. You'd feel bad about that, and so would, it, you know, yeah. the other way as well. People yeah. don't understand that, do they? No, they don't. And just because you've paid for something doesn't make it yours either. Mm-mm. So people say, but I've paid them. No, you haven't paid them. You might have paid them f- for the work they've done, but you haven't paid them for the intellectual property. No, that and that's that's and a really fine distinction that a lot of people don't quite get. No, the intellectual property, and that is, and you know, by way of a, a very simple explanation, you've paid them to to actually do it and produce a plan for you, but you don't own the idea. No, you only own the plan, or you even. You don't even yeah. own the plan, do you? Well, you're only getting it. You can only build it on that block, yeah, and do it that you've they've drawn it for. You can't go mm. and reproduce it. No, um, that's and you can't sell it on to somebody else. It's not yours to sell. No. It's um, you can if they agree to it, obviously. But mm. um, do you yeah. know if there's if there's much of it goes on in the industry, Jay? Oh yeah, I would say a lot of it goes on. Really. Um, because who would know if you yeah, just wander nice. through a display home and you get a brochure and then you think, oh, yeah, I like that. Unless you've given names, you've given addresses and things like that, who's ever going to know? Yeah, quite right, quite but right. But it's, it's, yeah. really plagiarism at its worst, isn't it? Mm. But it's, yeah. Well, we when when we got involved in it, we weren't builders then. Mm. We, we, we were just... <laughs> We were just building with a builder. Oh, okay. And it was a dispute between the builder and a designer that used to work for him. Mm. And they'd had a falling out. And when he was working for the builder, he was working as a contractor, not as a employee. Oh, okay. Um, he was an employee. He was there every day and he was – but he was being paid as a contractor. Mm. So when they had their falling out, the builder just went on and built those plans again. And I happened to be one of the people that built it. He built them. There were three people. There were three people, just innocent people mm. involved with us. And, um, yeah, out of the blue, I was home by myself one night and I got this letter from a lawyer going, you've breached copyright and hand over $28,358.45 mm. by next week or otherwise we're going to court. Mm. Supreme Court, not not, yeah, no. n- not the magistrate's court. <laughs> yeah, we're going to Supreme Court. Goodness, yeah. <laughs> and then, okay. And I threw it, screwed up and threw it in the bin. I thought, oh, yeah, right, eh? whatever. <laughs> but it played on my night, mind all night. I got up and I thought, hmm, maybe I should get it out of the bin and... <laughs> And my read, first, read it again. <laughs> my first big mistake, I should have left it in the bin mm. um, because once you fax it to a lawyer, obviously. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> obviously, well, no, you better take this seriously. Yeah. And, of course, once lawyers are involved, there's letters going between each lawyer and it's costing you money and all those mm. things where the other people, pa- the other parties involved didn't respond so they don't actually have to go to court until they get subpoenaed to court because they just haven't responded. So they got <laughs> they got to wait to be served with their papers. <laughs> so they're way down the line. So it's costing me money before they've ever yeah yeah fronted up to do anything. Yeah, um, and our lawyer said, "Well, you weren't really party to it. Um, you went to a display home, built with the builder from that display home." How do you know that he didn't own copyright on the plans? You know, mm. so you're just along for the ride. Mm. Applied, we, so we applied to have it dismissed. Went in front of the judge, and oh, it was was horrid. Mm. She hated our lawyer, I'm sure, mm. <laughs> and she loved the other guy. <laughs> and the body language from the judge was just horrendous. Was it really talking to the two different lawyers, and? Um, she dismissed our thing to have it thrown out. Said, no, people don't just wake up and decide they're going to sue you. But, well, in this case they did. <laughs> um, Goodness. So we got all the way to um, mediation and we get into there um, to mediation and 
um, my lawyer goes, oh, just sit there and say nothing. You know, we're just along for the ride. And you think, hang on. Yeah. No one no one that's ever known me in my life think I'm going to sit there and say nothing. <laughs> no, <laughs> I can't imagine um, <laughs> And we're sitting there and we're listening to this guy saying how bitter and twisted he was towards the builder. And I'm sitting there listening and listening and listening. And I said, well... You know, I've sat here and listened to how bitter and twisted you are towards the builder. I've never met you before in my life and you've done this to me. Imagine how bitter and twisted I am towards you. Mm, yeah. And he hung his head down and he said, all I can say is the lawyer told me to. Oh. And you think, goodness oh, me. for goodness sake. <laughs> oh, dear. The, the, the law is an ass, isn't it, really? It is. It is. And the guy that was doing the mediation said to us, we said, well, you know, it's not right that he should do this to us and we're not involved. We don't know anything. We, we're we just innocent people. Mm. And the guy that's doing the mediation said, well, you know, you can fight it, but you're only fighting it for Joe Public to try and make things right and it probably will never be made right. So the best thing to do is he wants to walk away from you. You walk too. Mm. And then he come back and he said, oh, I'll walk, but you pay my legal fees. You think, yeah, sure. <laughs> no, not going to happen. So we both walked away and paid our own legal fees. Mm. Um, and the builder actually gave me back my, my, my legal fees. Did he really? He did. Yeah. Um, and that was one of the agreement I went to him when I first got sued. And he, I said, look at this. And he goes, well, if you settle out of court, um, that's your business. Um, but if you fight it, I'll give you back your legal fees. And you go, okay. But it's still a risk because if... You could have lost. If, well, it yeah, if he'd got to the end and the builder didn't get mm. um, charged with doing something wrong, mm. then he has... I have no comeback at him because he hadn't done anything wrong, so no. I could still be out of pocket for my legal fees. Yeah. But he, he didn't. Um, he gave me back my money. Mm. And he it kept going with him for a long time, and I spoke to him later on, and he said, "Oh, yeah, I got another law got another lawyer's letter." He said, "And I didn't tell my wife. I folded it up. I went outside. I got in my car, and I went round and knocked on the guy's door. Mm. And he was an Irish guy. That's why I didn't tell his wife because <laughs> she wouldn't have let him go because yeah. it could have been quite volatile. Uh, yes, of um, course." And the guy answered the door and started crying. And he'd lost everything. Mm. And you know who had it, don't you? <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> so, yes, <laughs> it just... It is a cautionary tale, though, isn't it? I mean, it, how you can unwittingly become involved in something like that and you need to take, make sure you know what you're handing your builder. Yeah, yeah, you do. You need to know and, yeah, and... Don't listen to lawyers either. <laughs> they tell you to Certainly say not. No, <laughs> Do your own homework bit, and make sure. It's, it's a bit of self-interest there, don't you think? Yeah, it is. <laughs> a bit of it is. Lining our own pockets. Yeah, yeah. Because this guy lost everything. He was in a no-win situation. He mm. couldn't. He couldn't possibly have won. Mm. Um, and you know that builder. He said, oh, "I had to take him out for coffee, and I'll give him some jobs to get him back on his feet." I think you're a better man than I am because there's no way I would have done it for him. No, indeed not. Um, but Goodness. that builder did. That's extraordinary. Helped him to get back on his feet, you think? <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, he's uh, yeah, one, a better man than, than I would have been. I yeah. can tell you I probably wouldn't have ever spoken to him in my life. But yeah. there you go. Yes. So I, I promised myself I'd never forget his name, but hey, I've forgotten, now you've forgotten it now. It. Well, that means that you, <laughs> you're not carrying around anything. Which I mean, but but it is a cautionary tale, isn't it? You you can't go around doing that sort of stuff because it you could get found out. It's oh, all could. the it it could come to pass that somebody sees it, and it could come to pass that they go in there on a weekend and have a bit of a look around and say, "Oh, I know this design." Yeah, yeah, they could, and, and all of a sudden yeah. you've got yourself a. a a a world of pain that you yeah. have to deal with. Yeah, and it it's just. Not worth it. No, it's not. No, but it's not. yeah, it's and you know, it wouldn't you want something different anyhow? If that's what you're paying for. Well, look, I would. It. I'd want something unique, and yeah. obviously, that's what Devright is specialises in 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 unique designs. And 
They don't need to have anybody else's ideas or anything put no. in there. I mean, it's all very iffy. You've got a small block. I mean, you can only put the bricks together in so many ways. I mean, <laughs> That's right. There is a finite number of ways you can do it, isn't it? And, you know, so that all, when you get down to um, the triplex developments in Carlisle, yes. a lot of those will be the same. You'll walk in the passage, you'll have a bedroom on one side and a living area yeah. on the other, and you walk through to the – most of them are the same kind of setup, anyhow. Yeah. Um, and there's only so many ways you can fit a building on a block. Yeah. You know. They're all the same size. They're all yeah. the same. But we're not um, talking about that, though. We're talking about the, the – um, the, the more prestigious homes, aren't we? Yeah. Um, well, those those ones are too. The ones that we were involved in was they were just a triplex in Carlisle. Mm. Mm. Um, but yeah, most of them would be the upper upper end ones. Mm. Mm. Um, and you know that's what you pay for, isn't it? When mm. the unique design of the features and yeah. everything like that, uh, it doesn't stop you from saying, "Yes, I, I, I would really like this included mm. in my design," yeah. but without. And that doesn't infringe copyright. We had one just recently in Sulman. We built in Sulman Avenue. We've got this nice house in Sulman Avenue. And there was a girl came to us that bought a block a few doors down, mm. came to us and said, oh, I'd like to look through the house, and, you know. And we said, okay, we'll come and see you. Never heard from her again. And <laughs> my client just happened to be looking through the South Perth um, approvals I don't know what it made him look there. And there's this house that looks just about identical to his. Mm-hmm. And he rings up and he goes, so look at this. And you go, hmm, yeah, looks a bit the same. And this is from the outside, inside. Um, and he said, what can we do about it? And you go, oh, you know, <laughs> just It's going to cost you a lot of money, isn't it? Yeah, well, he said, well, you know, you just got to think, well, you know, Mm. So yeah, there's sometimes not sometimes you just yeah. have to, as they say in the classic, suck it up. Well, he rang the he rang the builder mm. and said, "I'm just letting you know that it looks a lot like my house, mm. and it's going to be two doors from my house. At least make sure it's not the same colour." Yeah, and um, well, this is not a project. Home. And at least then the builder would have known. Mm. The builder would have been aware then that. Yeah, there's something that's not quite right here, and then the builder might have. Mm. I haven't been past to have a look to see what happened with the house, but mm. um, yeah, you just think, well, that that but, girl has set herself up. She could have come unstuck. That's right, and yeah. cost her a lot of money. Yeah, so many things you have to be so careful of in when you're building and or designing and building a home that you know it's uh, if. It, it pays to have the professionals look at it first mm. and and then modify a design and so on, not, not try and incorporate anything from anywhere. Yeah. Just to be on the safe side. Just to be on the safe side. Our designer said, look, I, I wouldn't even have someone else's plan next to me because no. you can't help but copy it because it's there. He says, exactly. so I wouldn't. He said, I just can't. No. Because... You can't help but copy it if it's there in front of you. No, that's right. So, because it's in your mind, isn't it? Mm, you look at it, and yeah, and then you can't help it. Yeah, and then sometimes it blocks you. You can't, you can't yeah. get around the other side of it, yeah. and, and so on. But yeah. it's all rules and regulations that that you need to be very much aware of. Yeah, you do. Like uh, you were telling me off air that there's pool fences now. Are, are the regulations for that changed in yes. recent times? Yes, if anyone's doing a new pool fence, um, the rules have changed. May 16, um, 2016, the new rules. So if you're putting a new pool fence up, make sure you're checking the new rules that are in place now. Mm. They're not res- retrospective, so if you've got a pool fence, you don't have to worry about mm. it. But it's just if you're building a new one. Yeah. And they they do get checked. Um, so you so need it's to the be council aware. is the uh, responsible authority for checking pool fences. Is that yes, right? yeah. yeah, most uh, they actually um, contract it out. I think it's mm. Royal Life Saving. Oh, okay. um, Check it. Yeah, um, but it is. Yeah, it's contracted out. But um, yeah, the shire is responsible, and they do check them, and they can come and check them any time they like. So um, if it's a new pool, we have to have it checked before we put water in it. So most shires will 
say that they're coming out to check the pool fence before you fill it up, mm. and they do come to site and check it. And Is that right? That's so are the rules uniform across the state for uh, pools? Yes, yes. Mm. But the the but there's a lot of ifs and buts because some things are retrospective and some things aren't. So mm. um, what a minefield. <laughs> yeah. So it depends when your house was built and what was in what was law when it was built. Mm. Um, but some things are are retrospective. So we built a house in Claremont that um, had windows onto the pool and it was allowed to at that stage. But mm. when the person went to sell it, um, the laws have changed about windows and being onto pools and they have to have restricted openings. So that was one of the things that the Shire came and checked and it was retrospective, so they had to make those windows with restricted openings. Mm. Um, so, yeah. I it, see. So you, you really do, when you come to sell a house, you have to – so you, you real, there are certain things like that that you've got to, got to make sure is yeah. complies. Yes, yeah, there are, yeah. This one in this case, and I only know that because it was my brother-in-law's mm. house that got <laughs> – so I know he had to make them – they had to make them okay. re, um, make, make, restricted make them comply. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but in the, if they make the fence higher and everyone's got glass fences, then you don't have to make mm. them higher. Mm. But you do have to keep your trees down on them all the time and make sure there's no trees that grow up to get footholds for children to climb oh, over. Goodness me, I hadn't thought of that. There you go. Yeah. So uh, that's what they look for for. For ways that little kids could actually get into a into a pool area. Yeah, they do. We 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 just did one in Claremont that had restricted openings um, on the so there were three awning windows mm. and the restricted opening on the on the ground on the ground, and then the next one up, the Shire made us put restricted opening in that because a child could these were awning windows could stand on the bar and climb through and drop down through the little hole on the awning window. And you think, if it was mm. going to go to that much trouble, it would have gone outside, got a chair and climbed over the fence. But <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> so the second window up had to be restricted opening as well. So, yes. yeah. Um, but, you know, they, that's, that's, that's well, the I rules. suppose that they, if they are the rules, they're not – I suppose they are just with kids in mind and people, you know, that um, – uh, that are not capable of making good decisions about where they swim and how they swim and all that sort of yeah. stuff. Yeah, a lot of our windows upstairs now and bedrooms have to be restricted opening mm. um, and it's not negotiable. Um, if it's in a bedroom, it has to be restricted opening if they can fall out the window. Um, Goodness me. Yeah. Is that right? Even yeah. when there's no pool there? Even when there's no pool there. If they could just fall out the window from a top story, uh -huh. Bedrooms have to be restricted openings. If it's a living area, it doesn't have to be restricted openings because it's assumed if it's a living area, there'll be people there with them. But if they're in the bedroom, they could be in there by themselves mm. and mm, have a moment. Have a moment where they think, oh, I don't like it in this house anymore. I'm going. And yeah. Goodness me. That's extraordinary. Yeah. Once again, points to the, the need to have a professional Yes. Design and build your home. Yes, yes. So it's, yeah, there's a lots and lots of rules out there that you've just got to live yeah, with. Yeah. Um, and once they make them law, there's nothing you can yeah. do about it. So if you have a registered builder, I mean, this is um, just somebody who wants to do their own thing, are they supposed to know all of those sorts of rules to, to comply? Um. We generally know most of the rules, um, but we're kind of like the GP, mm. um, so we're not the specialists, but then we okay. go to the window manufacturer and they are the specialist. They know that that's the rules they've, they okay. they know all their rules, yeah. so they know what they have to do and what they have. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So similar sort of thing to an electrician, if you like. He knows all the rules about what he can and can't do, yeah. you know, in terms of the electrical supply. Yeah. Uh, so a window manufacturer knows those things. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and the the electrician, we know generally what the rules are, mm. but he's the one that, you know, mm. if they're going to change the rules, they'll let him know. They won't necessarily let us okay. know. Okay, yeah. Um, it's the same as if the rules change with windows, the window manufacturers would be notified. Yeah. Um, so they know. So, 
it, so that their product, they make a product that, yeah. that complies with those restrictions. Yeah. So or they, rules. Yeah, yeah, they know that their product's got to comply mm. because otherwise they're going to go back and fix it anyhow. Well, so. <laughs> that's what they'll yeah. be required so, to do it. Yeah. So we know the rules. We know mm. that the standards we work under, but mm. the people that do those jobs, balustrating. We know what standard we work under. We know what basically it says. But you rely on the people that are doing the balustrading to keep up to date with mm. things that are changing and make sure that um, – They're across it. Yeah. They're across it. Mm. And that's why you've got to – you can't rely on – um, them to just do it. You've got to make sure now you know what standard you're working under and you know mm. all the rules and check to make sure they do know mm. as least as much as you know. Yeah. And if they don't, you know you could be in for trouble because sure. – Well, um, balustrading, and you brought up balustrading a moment ago, I mean, that's that's really something that um, can be quite scary if you don't get that right in you know, fall three floors. It'd spoil your day. It would definitely spoil your day. Um <laughs> But it's one of those things that keeps changing too. So yeah. the rules keep changing. So once there's accidents mm. and there's more than a few accidents, then they start looking at why and how can we stop those happening again. Mm. So balustrading is continually getting changed as well, the rules. Mm. Um, <clears throat> so most of the time they're not res retrospective of it either, but mm. sometimes they are if you were, okay. you know. Yeah. Um, but it's it, a lot of the time it is wrapped around uh, and brought about by an incident and it's just mm. safety related, yeah. isn't it? We have to now have a handrail on all straight, all stairs. Is that right? A continuous handrail. So you can't have a set of stairs with there's no handrail now. Mm. So just so just so a banister is not good enough, it's got to have a rail on the inside if it goes up against a wall? If you've got balustrading on one side, mm. that's fine. Mm. Um, but if you haven't got balustrade and you just got two walls, then you have to have a handrail. Mm. So you can't have stairs without something to hang on to. And it's got to be continuous. So if you've got winders in it, it's got to be continuous. But if, it, if you've got a landing and it can stop and start again. Mm. So you've got to know the difference between a landing and winders <laughs> too. I mean, it's... <laughs> It's okay. Yeah. So it's there's lots of things involved. Lots and lots of yeah. things. Yeah. Mm. Well, once again, don't do it yourself. No. Use get, get, get a professional to <laughs> yes. do it for you and that way you're not going to run into into those sorts of difficulties when somebody says, Well, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah. You should have done this. Just ask them what Australian standard they're working under. If they don't know, go to the next person. That's an interesting point, Jage. Um, Australian standards. That I, I guess there's one for just about everything, is there? There is. There is. Yeah. Um, years ago, we used to have the BCA, which is now the NCC because we've got to change the name of everything. Of course, we do. Um, Keep somebody on um, a job, that does. It does. And the BCA used to have pictures of everything in it of what everything had to be looked like and all those things and you could go to your BCA and you could have a look and see what what it should look like. Mm. I think they stopped doing that in 2007, I mm. think was the last one that they brought out with pictures in. Right. Now, if you read it, it just says refer to the Australian standard, refer to the Australian standard. So, yeah, and every standard you've got to buy. Um, how often do you buy it? Because you might buy it today and they change it tomorrow and you wouldn't know because mm. you've just bought it. And mm. so um, the, they come out and they go, oh, we're going to give you the BCA now for, or NCC for nothing now. You can get it online. You can look at it. You think, yeah, but it doesn't say anything anymore. So no, no, no. <laughs> it amazing. Just, just gives you the number that you got to look at. Um, yeah, so. So many pitfalls that uh, that doing it yourself is not a good a good option and uh, no. so uh, no. unbelievable. I learnt so much about all of that today. <laughs> Jay, thank you so much for joining us. No um, appreciate it. It's been most interesting and informative and we look forward to catching up with you again really soon. No problem. Thank you, Mary. More on the Sattler Files shortly. This is the Sattler Files. Devright Homes, when you're looking for attention to detail and a uniquely designed home to suit all your needs. At Devright Homes, we only build a limited number of homes per year, so we can truly focus on what you want out of a prestige home builder. We've continually won awards for excellence, with a record number of wins last year, and the proud winner of the Australian Townhouse Villa of the Year. 
While we love building homes to suit each client, we pride ourselves on designing homes that take into account the special safety needs of some of our clients. If you have a dream, we can make it come true. Talk to Jay Mangano and find out more about DevRite Homes at www.devrite.com.au. This is The Sattler Fire.